When I planted the garden, I planted the squash in a staggered way, and that's called succession planting, which meant that I first planted one container with the squash, and about a month later, I planted another container with the squash. Meanwhile, the first container, the plants had all come up and were doing well. And I did this succession planting because of two reasons. One is pests. Pests have a season. Now, I didn't have problems this year and in this location with pests on the squash, but I have in the past. And the pests that I've had in the past were squash bugs, and they make uh, eggs under the squash leaves and then the eggs hatch and start gobbling up all the leaves and before long the plant is dying and there's also squash borer bugs that bore into the stem of the squash plant however i noticed over the years that the squash bugs and squash borers seem to be finished near the end of the summer not the end of the season so therefore, I would usually plant a second crop of zucchini and yellow squash, planting them sometime like the end of July. And that would still give the plants enough time to produce vegetables before the frost, which for us is like the first or second week of November. And because I've got now two of these big round containers containing the squash plants, we get enough squash from these plants that we can eat them pretty much every other day. Something really interesting about squash plants is that they have separate male and female flowers. Here you can see how the male flower is so obviously male and the female flower is so obviously female. Now the inner part of a female squash flower not only looks female, but it has a baby attached to it. And if the female flower is not pollinated, the baby will die. Since the male flower is separate from the female flower, they need a third person to carry the pollen from the male flower over to the female flower. Most of the time they depend upon bees, which works pretty well. Now, these flowers bloom only in the morning and only for one day. So they only get one very short time in which to get pollinated. And you know, the bees don't care about pollinating flowers. They only care about nectar. Bees' purpose is to collect nectar to make honey. So if a female flower is not pollinated, then the baby that's behind the squash flower dies. And you know, I'm growing these squashes because I want to have squashes to eat. So, therefore, what people traditionally do is to make sure that those females get pollinated, you can actually pollinate them yourself. And because the flowers only last for a few hours every morning, sometimes what people do is they pick off a male flower and they rip off the yellow 
petals of the flower and then they uh, actually put the male part of that male flower inside the female part of the female flower. Okay. Who would think you'd be having an intimate relationship with a plant? I most of the time just use a Q-tip and I take the pollen over from the male flower to the female flower. And it works really well because I've got tons of squashes to eat. These squashes are a yellow-green squash hybrid and they're called Zephyr. And these Zephyrs are fantastic. They make a wonderful nutty flavor when you cook them. I slice them and put them on parchment paper. and roast them in the oven. They sort of become a little bit like, you know, almost like chips, like a little bit of meaty chips. And we just love them. Mm. Very good. By the way, I don't harvest in the morning. In the morning when it's cooler, I do check out what's ready to be harvested. But I've read that overnight, the plants are putting most of their energy into their roots. And then when the sun comes up, now all the photosynthesis reactions start occurring at the leaves and so the energy comes up to the leaves and also to the vegetables that the plant is producing. So therefore, if you want to get the maximum amount of nutrition from the vegetables that you harvest, it's best to harvest them later in the day. And I often harvest them around 3, 4, or 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Often it's kind of hot then and because I've checked them out early in the morning when I do my first watering, I don't have to wonder what's ready to be harvested. Of course, I sometimes miss something like this huge squash that I, I miss day after day after day and never even saw it. This is the fertilizer I use, BioLive 542. I get it from Amazon. The link is down below in the description. This is a powder and I just take it out of the box uh, in my hand and sprinkle it there. Can you see that? And then I just sprinkle it on the soil. I make sure that it's very well watered in because you want the fertilizer to seep down through the soil to nourish the roots because it's the roots that eat with plants. My latest challenge has been with my beloved squash plants. They have this white fuzzy stuff on the top of their leaves, powdery mildew. You know, the spores for the mildew are flying around all the time, but as the leaves get bigger and piled up on top of each other, this is when they get especially susceptible to this powdery mildew. Plus the plant is older and it's worn itself out producing all those wonderful squashes. So they say that the solution is to cut off the affected leaves and compost them, which is what I'm doing. But the real solution is to, in the future, plant resistant varieties of squashes, which makes me sad because, you know, I love that Zephyr variety. And they don't have any resistance, obviously. I love the taste of them. Anyway, next year I will get a resistant variety of squash. I 
And you know, they're still producing even with the powdery mildew. Just goes to show you they're like us. You don't have to be perfect to produce something of value. I had no idea that in containers, especially in containers like these that are not on the ground but are up in the air, so they're getting, they, they don't have any contact with the earth which stays a cooler temperature. These get so hot and so dry and of course the air under the pot is also drying it out that I was having to come up here some days four times a day otherwise they would wilt. So here's something else to consider when growing squash in a container as I am in my balcony garden. They've grown so big all of them that there's hardly anywhere for me to walk now. Well that's partly because of the growth habit of these plants. The squash is making new squashes on its growing tip. So the squashes start in the container when they were young and they look so pretty with their big leaves. Then they start flowering and now they start making baby squashes and of course I start harvesting them. The thing is they are not a plant that goes up, they are a plant that grows along the ground, but they're in a container. So first they grow over the side of the container. Then when it hits the ground, it grows along the ground. It is growing the new squash at the end of its growing tip. So that's why when you're growing squashes in container, you've got to consider that they're going to take up a lot of space once they're producing. It's Caroline Chapman, and I'm the author of When We Were Gods, which is a chronicle of my past life memories of the marvelous world of Atlantis. While I was writing the book, I received a visit from an otherworldly being, Pan, Lord of the Wild. He said that he had a message for mankind, and he wanted to be in the book. So I gave him a chapter in the book and Pan said that nature really needed our help and amazingly what nature wants the most from us is appreciation for all that it does for us. And he made the suggestion that we all grow something. And you know, when you grow something, you find out it's not that easy to make things grow. <laughs> In my video on growing this little container garden up on my balcony, I had a number of failures, but then I had to find out what to do to make them work. And it did really help me to appreciate all that nature does, because just think of that woods behind me. It's not going through the kind of trouble I had to go through, watering, fertilizing, pollinating, all the things I had to do. But in any case, um, I think that Pan's message, that was just part of it. And I think it's very important. Please remember to like and subscribe and comment